Cyberpunk has been out for well over a year, and in that time it has received a lot of updates. Like, a lot of updates. I'm not talking about sexy new content either, such as new weapons and vehicles. It has got this sort of content of course, but most of the updates have focused on fixing and improving the base experience. It's no secret that the game launched in an unfinished state, and the development team have spent the last year trying to get on top of things. The last time I looked at the user interface design in Cyberpunk 2077 was not long after launch. In that video I covered a lot of components, and I didn't have many positive things to say about them. On one hand, I thought that aesthetically these menus were nice to look at. The map screen, for example, is an attractive way to present this kind of information. On the other hand though, it's not very usable, let alone accessible. If we use the map as an example again, while being pretty to look at, it's hard to find what you need because of the choice of colors, icon design, and just generally how busy the layout is. With update 1.5, the largest the game has seen so far, CD Projekt Red has made significant changes to all areas of the game. Most interestingly, at least for the purpose of this video, are the changes they've made to the UI, and specifically to the interactive map. This is a component specifically mentioned in the patch notes, and given that it was one of the key areas that I highlighted in my original UI analysis, I wanted to revisit it. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Cyberpunk's map to see what has changed and if these changes have made it easier to use. My name is Louis, I'm a product designer by day, and when I'm not reviewing games and gaming tech, I like to analyze the UI and UX of the games I play. Overall, I think this is one of the most beautifully designed interactive maps I've ever used. It's modern, it's stylish, and it's visually striking. It looks like it was ripped straight out of a Ghost in the Shell anime. Functionally though, it had a lot of problems, and as one of the game's central interfaces, these shortcomings were made obvious pretty quickly. Before we get into the changes and what this screen does and doesn't get right, I wanted to quickly outline what an interactive map is and the problem it solves for players. Now, full disclaimer, I am not a game designer or developer, and there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of documentation on the web that provides a succinct definition of what an interactive map is. This is simply my best attempt to describe what this type of UI is and what it does. If you are a game dev or designer and want to correct me in the comments on any of the following, please go right ahead. Anyway, here goes. An interactive game map is an essential component of any open world game. You rely on it for various types of critical information, such as displaying points of interest, telling you where you are, where you need to go, and also how to get there. Additionally, it can act as an indication of your progress, because it can show you what you've completed and what you haven't. An interactive map needs to be intuitive. Quite often, you only need a single piece of intel, like a location, so you don't want to have to stare at a screen like this for a long time to glean this kind of information. It's a tool that you'll refer to hundreds, if not thousands of times during your playthrough. Therefore, its usability is a core pillar of the game's overall experience. So, if you can't find where to go or what to do next, for example, then you will almost certainly have a shitty time. Hopefully, that gives you a good enough understanding of this screen's purpose. And with this in mind, let's recap the issues I identified in my last video. Firstly, the icons. These tiny icons were almost impossible to decipher unless you zoomed in. They also had no labels, which meant that you had to memorize them or use the map's legend. To make matters worse, many of Cyberpunk's icons were esoteric, meaning their design didn't make it immediately clear what they represented. The home icon, for example, demonstrates how far Cyberpunk's icon design deviates from conventional iconography. Hierarchy is another big problem with Cyberpunk's UI, and the map demonstrates this problem in full. The sheer number of icons, text, and navigation elements overlaid on a detailed 3D map model make it extremely hard to know where to look first. The other major issue I raised was the use of color, and specifically the colors used for text. This red text overlaid on the red background lacks contrast and makes it challenging to read, even for the most optically gifted. Overall, this screen is a mess, albeit an attractive one depending on who you ask. So let's take a look at the map after the 1.5 update and see exactly what has changed. In the patch notes, there are two map-specific changes mentioned. At the very top of the UI list of changes is Various map usability improvements related to resizing icons, adding new tooltips and filters. This includes a dynamic filter based on zoom level, as well as a custom filter which can be configured by the player. The dynamic filter is an excellent idea that does a good job at mitigating the issue of clutter. It works much in the same way that Google Maps does. The more you zoom in, the more information the map reveals, and when zoomed out, side missions and other less critical information disappears. 
I think this could have been taken further still though and provide labels and other descriptive text when zoomed in. Again, like Google Maps does. The treatment of the filter menu is a significant improvement over the old legend. It looks like an actual navigation panel now and it stands out clearly from the rest of the screen. The text inside is much more legible and the navigation options are clear and understandable. The tooltips have received a similar uplift. The solid background, brighter border color, white colored text and removal of superfluous navigation prompts all contribute to making these much more scannable. Icon design was something that I criticized in my original video. A lot of them were overly complex and difficult to make out on anything but a large 4K display. Thankfully, it seems like someone at CD Projekt Red agrees and many of them have been simplified. These refined icons make them more recognizable and intuitive and in tandem with the dynamic filter, it's much easier to tell them apart now. I still think they could stand to be larger, particularly because the dynamic filter does such a good job at hiding the less important ones when zoomed out. The new cursor is a win too. Its larger profile and transparent design means that it doesn't obscure items behind it like the old one did. The low contrast and legibility of navigation text was previously an issue due to the choice of colors used, and we again see some improvements here. The biggest change is the addition of a solid background color behind the navigation elements at the top of the screen. These elements are more tightly packed together now as well as being underlined. The net result is a more defined set of options that stand apart from the rest of the UI. What's strange though is that the same treatment hasn't been given to the navigation elements at the bottom. These are the tools that you use to interact with a map and should be the most prominent. There are fewer options in this nav now which does make it less overwhelming and it's possible that the drop shadow contrast has been slightly increased, but otherwise this component hasn't seen any significant improvement. Now I just mentioned that there are fewer options in the bottom nav bar. These options haven't been hidden as far as I can tell, they've been removed entirely. One of these is the free camera option. This let you change the camera angle of the map and it's how I got those sexy shots for my original video. It was a cool feature, but I totally agree with its removal. It served no practical purpose and it simply added unnecessary options to a screen that already had too much information on it. The asterisks and numbers associated with map marker icons are gone now too. Not only was it unclear what this meant at a glance, but they added clutter and it made it challenging to visually separate the icons unless zoomed all the way in. The legend is another feature that's been discarded. I thought this was a band-aid solution and I think the new filter options do a much better job at helping you identify what everything is. Now the other map specific change mentioned in the patch notes is the ability to see the progress if you're standing with a fixer. This is done by hovering over the fixer's icon to see the completed gigs. I like how this fits in with the philosophy of providing more information the further you drill into the map. It's also a nice quality of life enhancement that allows you to get information that was previously hidden in another screen. So this update has introduced some important changes and I think overall the usability of this interface is improved. But there are still a few areas that I think are lacking, so I'm going to do my best to suggest some solutions. I've already mentioned a couple of these, such as adding labels to icons when zoomed in. This would prevent you from having to memorize what each one meant and it would speed up how quickly you could scan this screen. I'd add icons to the custom filter list too. The old legend actually had this and while I thought its design was counterproductive, I don't think there would be any disadvantage of adding them to this new menu. Placing the icons next to their corresponding labels would help you remember what each one represents. The bottom navigation elements need the same treatment as the top. Clearly separating the navigation options from the rest of the non-interactive text on the screen through consistent design would allow players to more easily see what options are available. Adding more contrast to these options would also greatly improve the accessibility of this UI. And on that note, I'd ditch the red color used for text as well. It looks cool, but the new tooltip design proves how much easier it is to read white text on a dark background. Red text completely fails the basic accessibility test. Making this change might also allow people with certain types of color blindness to use this screen without having to jump into the accessibility options. While on the topic of text, I think this screen still has a hierarchy problem. The most prominent elements are the top navigation and the new filter list. The new filter list is important, but not more than the main tools for navigating this UI. So I'd center these and change the text color to white to make them stand out. Knowing that Western audiences typically look at screens in an F shape, I'd move the current mission info to the left. I'd relocate the location info here as well, and I'd redesign it because again, the hierarchy of this component feels jumbled. 
I'm not suggesting that these changes are perfect, but you can see with a few simple layout and design tweaks, this screen is starting to look a bit better. Overall though, as I mentioned before, I think this UI is much improved. And it's great to see the development team focusing on all areas of the game, not just things like graphics and performance. I think the interactive map is a perfect microcosm of the rest of the game. It's clear that a lot of work has gone into fixing some of its biggest problems, but there's still a ways to go to make it into something truly special. It's fascinating to see how this UI has evolved over time, and I'm just as curious to see what future updates will bring. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, why not drop it a like, and of course a dislike if you didn't. If you want to find out more about how I make these videos and support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page. If there's a specific UI that you'd like me to cover, be it good or bad, drop your thoughts in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for your time.